let us start the staining techniques which are used to stain the bacterial cell. I am Dr. Sharad Deshmukh from SHJ Swal College, Arjuni Morgaon. Let us see the details of the staining technique. So first, why it is necessary to stain the bacteria? This is the main question. As you know that the bacteria are microscopic organisms and they are colorless or they may be the semi-transparent. So they are very difficult to observe under the bright field microscope. So in order to visualize them, to study their structures, that is the shape and other structural characteristic, it becomes necessary to make them more easily visible. If we impart the color, then they will become opaque and we will able to see this organism clearly under the bright field microscope. So in this case, the structure have to be contrasted from their environment so that they can be seen very easily and you can study the morphological characteristic of these organisms. Now you require the staining solution or the stains for this purpose. So what do you mean by the stain? Stain is a dye used to color the living or the dead organelles and every color compound is not a stain or a dye. Basically stain and dye are the same but it is an organic compound containing benzene ring which both chromophore and oxochrome groups are attached. Here the chromophore group is responsible to give the color and oxochrome group is responsible for the ion formation. Then and only then that compound become stain or a dye. So the all the compounds are not the stain or dye which are colored form. Then what is the basic difference between the stain and the dye? As we say that both are the same but why we use the two terms stain and the dye? The basic difference is the stain is used for biological purpose and hence they are more purified while the dye is used for the general purpose and that is uh, generally we are using these dyes in various places to impart the color while the stain is used particularly for the biological purpose and hence the stain is more purified as compared to the dye. So this is the basic difference in the stain and the dye. Basically both are the same but based on their use they differ that is the stain and the dye. Now let us see the types of the stains. You can see here the first one is the acidic stain. These are negatively charged and acid radicals that impart the color that is eosin acidfuxin, malachite green, negrosin and india ink. These are the acidic one that is having the negatively charge. While the second one is the basic stain which are positively charged basic radicals which combines with the negatively charged particles in cytoplasm and gives or impart the color. So they have more affinity towards the negatively charged particles in the cytoplasm. For example, methylene blue, crystal violet, gentian violet, hematoxylene, all we are commonly using in the laboratory, particularly the crystal violet most commonly used in the gram strain. Then next one is the third one that is the neutral dyes or the stains. Both are positively and negatively charged. They possess both positive charge as well as the negative charge and impart the different colors to the different components. Here earlier we have seen that the negative and positive. Negative have the more affinity towards the positive and positive stains have the more affinity towards the negative structures. While in the neutral they are able to stain or impart the color 
to different color because of their having the positively and negatively charged together. And for example, these are the Jimsa stain, Lishman stain, Wright stains. These are most commonly used in the laboratories. Particularly, you can see the Jimsa stain or the Lishman stains used to demonstrate the uh, malarial parasite, the smear of the blood which are stained with this staining solution. And also we are observing the various cells of the blood by staining this solution, they impart the different color to the different parts, components of the cell. Now let us go to see the what are the different types of the staining methods, particularly used in the bacteriology to stain the bacteria. This includes first part is the positive staining and under the positive staining the there are subtypes like simple staining differential staining and third is the silver impregnation method why we call it as a positive stain because we are imparting color the cell is taking the color of the stain that's why we mention it as a positive stain while the next category is the negative stain where the cell remain colorless but the background is the dark that's why the term uses the negative stain and in this case we will go to see the different types of the staining methods in the positive staining where the actual cells are themselves colored and appear in a clear background and one of the first staining from the positive stain is the simple staining the name itself suggests a stain which provides the color contrast but gives the same color to all bacteria and the cell where here we are using the only single staining solution that's why it will impart the same color to all the bacterial cells for example if you stain the smear of the bacterial culture with leprous methylene blue or the polychrome methylene blue dilute carbophoxine or saffronin or the crystal violet that will give only the specific color to the all the bacteria to, that is the same color for example we are commonly using the crystal violet it will give the violet color to all the cells whatever may be the characteristic of the bacteria the same color is given by the stain what we call as the simple stain that's why it is also referred as the monochrome stain monochrome means mono means single chrome means the color they are imparting the only one color to all types of the cell we will continue further regarding the second that is the differential staining method here the name itself suggests differential where we can differentiate the cells on the basis of the color a stain which imparts the different colors to different bacteria is called as the differential stain that means which contains the more than one stain then only it is possible to perform the differential staining so it will have the different color to the different groups of the bacteria that's why it is termed as the differential staining here the best example is the gram staining technique and second is the acid fast staining where we are commonly using the zeal nation staining method in the acid fast staining and the other example is the special stain which are used to stain the particular bacterial part like the flagella or the spore or the any other structure of the bacterial cell that will differentiate that give the specific color to the structure than the bacterial cell that's why it is called as the differential staining method so next category that is the negative staining that is number two where the cells remain clear that is uncolored they do not take any stain while the background is colored to create a contrast to aid in the better visualization of the image the cell do not take any color but the background will get stained you will can see the clear unstained bacterial cells against the dark background particularly the in indying preparation or by using the negrosine stain particularly negrosine is also most commonly used where the stain will appear on the surrounding that will the black color will be seen but bacteria are seen colorless against the dark background that's why it is called as the negative staining let us see the further 
the if you want to stain the bacteria then you have to prepare the smear so we will go from the basic concept that is the how to prepare the bacterial smear or the bacterial smear preparation so smear is nothing but a distribution of the bacterial cells on a slide for the purpose of viewing them under the microscope to view them under the microscope it is necessary to spread them on the surface of the slide and that is what we call as the smear or a film you can also refer the bacterial film that can also be used an alternative to the smear let us see the method used to prepare the bacterial smear in this case if you want to prepare a smear from a bacterial culture on a solid media then you have to aseptically take a small sample of the culture which is mixed with a drop of saline on the glass slide we have to take this glass a drop of the saline on the glass side with the help of the inoculating loop and then it is mixed with the drop a suspension is prepared and is spread over its surface in the form of a thin film that will form a smear then this it is allowed to dry in air and the next step is the heat fixation to help the cell adhere to the slide surface it is necessary to fix the smear otherwise it will get wash off during the staining procedure so fixation is the most important step in the staining procedure when you prepare the smear from any bacterial culture otherwise it may get wash off and the basic principle behind the or the mechanism behind the fixation is due to the passing through the heat the cell protein get denatured or coagulate and the, they will adhere to the glass surface that's why they get fixed they cannot be removed by washing during the procedure of the staining now in this case the smear fixation is also of the different types the first just i have already mentioned that is the heat fixation where they have to pass the air dry smear through the flame two or three times gently so you should not keep for the longer period it should not be overheated it must be plus pass gently through the flame three to four times and that will fix the smear the second method is the fixation by the methanol or we can mention the methanol fixation here you have to place a air dry smear in a coupling jar with a methanol for one minute or you can flood the smear with the methanol and allow to act for the one minute and that will help to fixation of the smear the after the addition of the methanol you have to drain the slide and allow to dry before staining procedure then we'll see the next step that is a simple one that is the methylene blue or dilute carbon function and it is generally the most useful and it shows the characteristic morphology of the cells that is the more clearly and it is also called a monochrome stain as a single staining is used so that is a simple staining i have mentioned here that is by use of methylene blue or dilute carbon function and when you stain the smear fix smear with this stain and allow to act for one minute that will stain all the stain with the single color and that is also called as a monochrome stain the next one that is a polychrome methylene blue this is made by allowing the lawless methylene blue to ripen the slowly here we are mentioned polychrome methylene blue here the lawless methylene blue is allowed to ripen slowly and that is the slow oxidation of the methylene blue will form a violet compound that gives the stain and its polychrome properties that means it can impart the different color to the different parts in the cells the ripening takes about the 12 months or more to complete or it may be ripened quickly by the addition of the 1% potassium now we'll see the simple staining technique in detail by using the dilute carbol function so made by diluting the zeal nilsen stain with 10 to 20 times of its volume of water so dilute carbol function means the carbol function which is used in the zeden staining is diluted 20 to 20 uh, 10 to 20 times of its volume of the water and stain for 10 to 50 second 
and wash well with water. Here the O staining must be avoided as this is an intense stain and prolonged application colors the cell protoplasm in addition to the nuclei and the bacteria. Here the procedure we have to follow one by one you have to make a thin smear on a grease free scratch free slide then you have to prepare the smear that is by fix by the heating by passing through the flame three to two to three times gently over the Bunsen flame with the smear side up then pour the methylene blue or the smear or you can use the dilute carbon function and allow it to stand for three minutes then wash the stain smear with water and air dry that is allowed to dry in air then you have to observe the smear first under the low power objectives and then under the oil immersion objective or oil immersion lens you will able to see the clear cut stain bacteria under the oil immersion lens then the presence of organism and also the cellular content of the sample can be seen under the oil immersion lens now this here complete the simple staining and we'll see the remaining part in the next lecture